Welcome Biology 202 lab students to the Heart Dissection Lab. Today we'll be dissecting a sheep heart and discovering the external and internal features. But first, let's talk about supplies, tools, cleanup, and safety. The supplies your group of four will need are a sheep heart, paper towels for cleanup, latex, or nitrile gloves, which are blue. The tools your group will need are a dissecting tray, a dissecting tray pad, and a box of dissection tools that contain scalpels, pens, scissors, and tweezers. Cleanup requires you to throw away your group's dissected heart into the big gray tub that says animal waste only. Please put it in the bag, not just in the tub. Wipe down your dissection area, washing and drying all tools, dissection tray and pad, and your hands before you leave. Some notes about safety. The preserving solution the heart is in is safer than formalin, formaldehyde, or paraformalin, but is not safe for the skin or eyes. Let's take a moment to find the eye wash station. Sinks for skin washing and the first aid kit. Also, when wearing a latex glove, if your hand becomes itchy and burning, then it is likely you're allergic to latex. Take off the gloves and wash your hands. In the first aid kit, we have hydrocortisone pads to wipe the affected skin that should help reduce symptoms. Please be mindful of the scalpel as it is very sharp and can slice through the skin easily. During all labs, students are required to wear closed-toed shoes. This is to prevent any accidents with preserving fluid and sharp objects such as scalpels falling and slicing the toes. Remember, scalpels fall at 9.81 meters per second squared, just like everything else. Getting your heart out of the bucket is a little tricky. Use the green opener to pry up the lid. Once you have your heart, place it in your tray and go back to your group's area. This is how we open the lid. You take this little C-shaped thing, you go around the circumference of the lid, prying up in various places, and then, voila, the lid opens, and you have access to your yummy hearts. Let's identify some external features of the heart before we begin cutting, so we know where to cut the heart correctly. First, let's massage the heart, with the vessels pointing down to see the proper gestalt or shape of the heart. So I'm just going to massage it around here, the lateral sides, all the way around. Notice the juice that comes out. Point it always down so it doesn't squirt in your eyes. The first external feature we're going to find is the apex. The apex is easy to find because it's pointed. So this is pointing down the inferior end of the heart. The opposite side is called the base. This is where all the valves are located and all the vessels. So larger side is the base, smaller side is the apex. Now we need to find what is the anterior and posterior side. So second external features we need to find are the left and right auricles. Now, these are the auricles here. This and this. But in order to find the anterior side, they should be peeking around the corner like ears, because in Latin, auricle means ear. Here they're not peeking around. So let's take a look at the other side and we can see the auricle is peeking around there and peeking around here. So this is the anterior side. 
we've correctly oriented our heart. We know anterior, posterior, inferior, and superior. Now we've correctly oriented our heart, and we know our anterior side, posterior side, inferior and superior sides. We need to identify the vessels that are located around the heart. So the best place to see those vessels is if you flip your heart upside down with the apex pointed toward you. And now I can see several different vessels. I encourage you to poke your fingers in them so it'll help you remember better. Here's a pulmonary artery. And as I poke my finger down into the pulmonary artery, I notice that I'm going deep into the heart. That means I'm going into a ventricle. The same thing with the large vessel next to it is the aorta. And as I poke my finger into it, I'm going deep into the heart. Now, we're gonna take a look at the pulmonary veins, which dump directly into um, a atria, an atrium, which we can see here. And then we have the vena cava, which also pours into an atrium. Into the right atrium and the left atrium. Okay, some other external features. We want to find our interventricular sulcus, which is this line here. And on the other side, we also have a sulcus, which is part of that same system. We can see a lot of fat that's around this well-fed, corn-fed sheep. Now that you've identified all the external features, you're ready to cut. Looking at the anterior side of the heart, we'll begin cutting at the apex. We are splitting the heart into front and back halves with a coronal cut. Using a saw-like motion, cut through the heart. As you cut, only put the scalpel blade into the heart, not the handle. Move up from the apex, cutting on the right lateral side, all the way to the base. Now open the incision you've made and cut the rest of the heart from the inside. This will split the heart into front and back halves. Looking at our frontal section, denoted by the anterior side, your group needs to locate the interventricular septa and the in inner atrial septum the epicardium, the myocardium, and the endocardium. Let's pretend that you're a red blood cell in the inferior vena cava, which is right in here. How do I know left and right ventricles in the heart? Well, you can see this myocardium is much thicker than this side. This must be the left ventricle here and here because the left ventricle needs to have more force from muscle contraction to be able to eject blood into the aorta, into the body circuit, which is much longer than the pulmonary circuit, which is done by the right ventricle here and here. So now we know where we're going as our red blood cell. So we come in through this inferior vena cava into the right atria. And we sit here for a moment next to the pectinate muscles. Then we're shunted by the atria through the right AV valve, past the chordae tendinae, which are here, and the papillary muscles and trabeculae, which are on the walls of the ventricle. And now we're in the right ventricle. Then the pressure begins to build. And at this point, the right AV valve shuts and it's held in place by the papillary muscles and chordae tendinae. Now we're ejected 
out into the pulmonary artery through the pulmonary semilunar valve. And we can dig for that with our fingers, making sure that we know where we're going. So find your fingers, you know where your pulmonary artery is. <clears throat> but we're still carrying a lot of carbon dioxide. Now we need to get to the alveoli to pick up some O2. As we pass through increasing bifurcations of the pulmonary arterial system, we get our oxygen by going next to the pulmonary capillaries and alveoli. We've dumped our carbon dioxide, we've picked up oxygen, and we're headed into the anastomoses of the pulmonary venous system. We enter the heart through the pulmonary veins, which are right here, inside there, into the left atria. Then we bypass the left AV valve its chordae tendinae, and into the left ventricle. And as before, the pressure builds, this time shutting the left AV valve. And we're ejected now out into the aorta. And you'll have to dig for that, and then you can find where the aorta is. And we're ejected quickly through the aortic semilunar valve in a toroidal vortex, which is like a smoke ring, into the ascending aorta. Before you begin cleanup, ask your instructor to quiz each individual in your group on the parts of the heart. Once quizzed and your instructor gives you the green light, go ahead and clean up your area, tools, and throw away your heart in the correct place. Good luck.